As you guys can see from the headline showcased on your screens right now, a pivotal bantamweight matchup and a bantamweight firefight is on tap for the UFC main event of the fight night on September 17th. Three months to the day, exactly, and we're going to get one of the most interesting and eye-opening fights in the UFC currently. Now, if you look at this fight and then compare it to the fight that's going to be main eventing next weekend between Mateus Gamrot and Armin Saryukian, I think Corey Sandhagen versus Song Yedong, which is number four versus number nine in the 135 pound ranking, has the same kind of twang and the same kind of, I guess you could say, balls that the UFC brass is showcasing here. It's not a fight between two top five contenders where a win here would guarantee them a title shot or a number one contender fight. If Gamrot or Saryukian win their fight next weekend, they have to win at least one or two more fights to be considered for a contender fight in their division. And the same thing goes without saying for Sandhagen versus Song Yedong. Yes, if Sandhagen does defeat Song Yedong and does it impressively, he may only need one or two more wins. But if Yedong comes in and puts Sandhagen away or does enough to get the nod of the judges' scorecards over 25 minutes, it's not only a chance for China to have their first male UFC champion, but it's a chance for another breakout star in the UFC and another rising contender and story of glory for Sacramento's Team Alpha Male. Sandhagen versus Song Yedong, like I said, is a fight that I never expected to be made, but it's a fight that I'm all for 100%, and I'm going to be glued to the screen the minute this fight goes down. You know, Sandhagen, like we said, is ranked number four in the division. Song Yedong ranked number nine. Both men have knockout victories over the former bantamweight title challenger and former powerhouse and the now-retired Magic Marlon Marais. Sandhagen did it with a spinning wheel kick to the jaw, while Song Yedong landed a beautiful three-punch combo, culminating with a rear uppercut to put Marlin into outer space. I believe that Corey's was a little bit more impressive, considering he did that after the loss that he suffered to the current UFC bantamweight champion in Aljamain Sterling via first-round rear naked choke in a fight that a lot of people believed was going to be either uber-competitive or that Sandhagen was going to style on the Funk Master for the entirety of the fight, no matter how long it lasted. But Song Yedong's win is equally impressive because he showcased that even if he may have gotten touched once or twice in the opening round, he was able to, every time he landed on the chin of Magic Marlon Marais, put him under a daze and put him under his own spell. He was landing constantly. That overhand right couldn't miss. The overhand right to the left hook to the right uppercut was finally the one that put Marlon Morais out for good. Song Yedong had a questionable win, of course, in one of the first UFC events of, co of the COVID era, where he got a decision nod over the now streaking Marlon Chito Vera. Vera's coming off of that huge win over Rob Font in a fight where I believed it was going to be close, but the New England Cartel's Font was going to be able to jab his way to a victory. However, that was not the case. And that win for Song Yedong, albeit controversial or maybe you know, questioned by a lot of the MMA masses, it looks better and better as the days continue to go on. And considering the fact that Marlon Chito Vera has a main event fight booked against Dominic the Dominator Cruz and the former bantamweight champion in the UFC and WEC, it only gets better by the day. If Yudong goes out and is able to put those lightning fast boxing and kick combinations on the chin of Corey Sandhagen, he can put him out. But Corey Sandhagen is shown to be durable, he's shown that he can take shots, and he's shown that he is able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best strikers in the world, including Piotr Jan, who he was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with at UFC 267 in what I believe to be the fight of the year for that year, and one of my favorite fights of all time. And coincidentally, in my opinion, I believe it to be the most technical fight in MMA history when it comes to striking an MMA purist, you know, fan bases. A win for either man is huge. I feel like this is a must win for Sandhagen, even though he is a fan favorite in my opinion. A loss here to Song Yedong would probably put him at around 8 or 9 in the division and put his title hopes and aspirations on hold for the foreseeable future. However, an impressive win over the number 9 ranked Song Yedong would, like I said, 
probably only keep him one or two fights away from getting another crack at the gold at 135 pounds. If Song Yedong is able to get the nod, whether it's decision or knockout, if it's a knockout, it's the most impressive win of his career, and it really puts the division on notice, and has him probably one or two fights away from a championship fight in the division. I love everything about this fight. I think that it's going to be one of the best and most technical striking matches on the feet that we've seen in recent history. With the constant stance switches, angle changes, and multi-stance combinations that Corey Sandhagen uses while mixing all eight points of striking, including punches, knees, kicks, and elbows, and Song Yedong is able to move in and out freely and mix his combinations together while putting the hammer down with some of the most crisp, clean, and fast boxing the UFC has ever seen. The main difference in Yedong's striking, mainly when it comes to the boxing compared to other fast strikers like a Cody Garbrandt, is the fact that he doesn't sacrifice technique for speed. A lot of the fastest strikers, and when it comes to the hands in MMA, will throw four, five, six, seven punch combinations in the blink of an eye, but their chin will be exposed and they'll be throwing it with not the best technique. Yudong's speed is times a thousand and sh the technique is as sharp as ever. And that's a dangerous combination. And it doesn't matter if you're Corey Sandhagen, Piotr Jan, Rob Font, or the champion in Eljamain Sterling, everybody in that division needs to be put on notice. And this fight on September 17th might be the best way to get it done. But I don't know. Can Corey come out and look the best he's ever looked and look better than he did in his last performance? I'm not sure. But if it's mission accomplished for the Sandman, he's going to be the talk of every major MMA media outlet. And we're going to be thinking just how quickly can Sandhagen get back to the title? And can he be the next champion and defeat Eljamain Sterling? after the first fight went so dominantly in the other direction. I don't know, but I can't wait for this fight to go down. And I hope after this little brief pre-fight synopsis and breakdown, you can't wait either. Either way, like I said, we're in for a treat. And Sandhagen versus Yadong is going to be one thing. A complete and utter firefight. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, Drop an anaconda choke on the like button and a darsh choke on the subscribe button. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.